So here's a little food for thought. What if self-love is less about romancing yourself and more about becoming a better investor of your energy? And what I mean by that is there's two parts to this. One is you need to set really strong boundaries for yourself, what you will and won't accept, and hold yourself to that, enforce those, you know, like love yourself enough to enforce your own boundaries as much as you would your child. And then the second part is to not invest in people, places, times, events, where your energy is just going to leak out and you're going to lose your capital investment, right? It's okay to invest in things and not make a return. And, you know, even if you make a little bit of a loss, but basically you want to get at least your capital back. You want to get the, the energy invested back, right? Ideally, you want to make profits on your investment. In other words, you want to invest in people, places, times and events that will add to the energy. Now, when you get around people who can also hold their boundaries well, uh, respect their own boundaries and yours, and they know how to invest their energy wisely also, when two or more people you know, better a group of people who know how to do this get together and invest their energy into something. What happens is there's a synergy that goes on. You can make, you know, 10 times the amount of energy back that you invest in. And you can do it in a very short period of time. And so, you know, when we're setting these boundaries, right, it's not just about, oh, I like this, I don't like that. The other thing we need to do is free ourselves of other people's expectations of what boundaries should be, okay? You need to get to a point in your life where you realize that you are the master of your reality. And as the master of your reality, you have the right to choose what your new outcomes are, what your boundaries are, what you value, what you don't, what your beliefs are, what you don't believe. And it doesn't have to be good for anyone else. No one else has to understand it. No one else has to agree with it. No one else has to even support it. As long as you're happy with it, and it's what you want, and you're not hurting anyone, including yourself, then there shouldn't be an issue with it. Right. People who understand this won't have a problem with you setting your boundaries. The people that have a problem with you setting boundaries are the people that are benefiting from your energy investment. And due to this new boundary being set, they won't be getting any more energy income from you. Right? Those that respect your boundaries, those that know how to invest, if you change your boundaries on them and uh, they will go, okay, I get it, I understand, or I don't understand, but I respect your boundaries, um, I will be okay without your energy investment. You go do what you need to, to do, be you, you do you, you be you, and uh, hopefully uh, once you've sorted out and, and you've got everything you need out of this transition, Maybe there'll be an opportunity to do something new together, right? Or, thanks very much, I enjoyed the ride, and we can go our separate ways. I wish you all the best. The other thing is, and this is something that just came up recently that I couldn't really put my finger on until it turned up in a meme, for Christ's sake. And it was that also, self-love is about being disciplined, right? It is about setting new intentions for yourself. They could be, in my case, as an example, a new health goal, health and fitness goal. And it is having the discipline to show up when you say you're going to. Stick to the schedule. 
or at least if you can't make the schedule because of life or you know it's too demanding that you take your rest and you reschedule your schedule and you get back on the beam and keep going until you end up in the state or have the results or get into the mindset or embody the the energy that you are wanting to be now furthermore this is you know the reason why a lot of people don't show themselves self love in this way is because they know they can't stick to these lofty goals that they've set or they can't get through the you know the the work that needs to be done to get there and you know I hear this a lot people say oh well, I won't start anything unless I can do it a hundred percent because I'm one of those hundred percent people and I've said this before those people they end up doing jack fucking shit they don't do anything they're, they're, you know what they're 100% at? Not starting anything and not changing. And the reason being, I imagine in most cases, is that the pain of disappointment, of failing, is too much to bear, right? They would rather fail and stay safe. and They would rather not fail and stay safe and not start anything and... and maintain and manage their little bubble then step out of their comfort zone take some risks risk failing risk having to start again risk loss um, in order to get to where they want to be now you can be motivated by two things two or more than two things but let's say two things for now you can be motivated by the rewards you're going to get when you finish your process of change and growth and giving yourself this kind of self-love you know, in, in terms of allowing the energy to be invested into you and to keep doing it until you break through. Or you can be motivated, that's towards motivation, or you can be motivated with away from motivation and the away from motivation that works for me is I would rather face the loss of failure than face the opportunity cost loss of never taking the risk and having to live a mundane, mediocre life that's Groundhog Day, that's predictable, that's boring, that there's no growth, there's no risk, there's no failure, but there's no reward either. It's so safe, it's it's nauseating. And you're really just moving through life numb, and then one day, you know, you wake up and you go, holy shit, where did my life go? I was a young man, I had all this opportunity, and uh, I squandered it because I was afraid. I was afraid of loss. I was afraid of failure. That, to me, is far more painful than taking a risk, investing in yourself, failing, and uh, maybe not hitting your target the first time around or the first few times around, first tw 10, 20 times around, or for the first several years, in fact, could be. Uh, and learning something and resetting yourself and readjusting and upgrading and evolving yourself. That, uh, that failure of not moving on is much more painful than the fear, the, the fear of failure of not even beginning, right? Now, when you get into this and you get rolling, yeah, even though you have this huge lofty goal that might seem impossible, if you just start to set out, okay, maybe not in the first couple of weeks or months or maybe even the first few years, depending on how big your goal is, you might not see much results. But over time, if you stick with it, it will reveal its secrets to you and it will start to reward you for your efforts.
and your bravery and your courage. Okay? Now, I get it. It's fucking painful, right? Not only failing is painful, but the realization, and you could be in your 20s, you could be in your 30s or 40s, you know, you could be even, you know, in your 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s, and you come to the realization that, hey, um, I haven't been living my life in a way that I would really have chosen if I was if I was loving myself right and you got to face that pain right you got to face that pain that is the breakthrough pain that is the thing that you have to move past and beyond in order to ever escape the gravity of your past self and you know I think that's just a fact and most people won't even approach it because they're afraid of looking at their life up until now and go fuck you know I could have been this I could have been that I could have had this I could have had that I could have done this I could have done that if only I had the fucking balls to step out of my comfort zone and set my boundaries, not take shit from people that, you know, I knew I shouldn't do, I shouldn't take it from, not compromise myself because I needed validation or recognition or I needed, you know, I was needy. I was needing to be needed, right? I was talking to a friend uh, today about this and, you know, a lot of the things we do and the connections we make with people are to give ourselves this image of being indispensable. Like, you know, there's no one like me that can do this. I'm value. And yeah, okay, like, I'm sure you are. Everybody has their value. But there are billions of people in this world. And if you're not going to do it, somebody else will. You know, just look to... Look to the company you work for. Look, if you're a business owner, look at the, your, your people who work for you. If they're not going to do the job, you're going to replace them in, instantly, as soon as you possibly can. And, uh, and you know, just like, you, you know, if you're working for someone and, and they're not treating you uh, anywhere near your value, you're going to look for another job. It's the same with relationships. It's the same with anything. So the fact of the matter is you're expendable, right? You're expendable. You, anyone can replace you uh, in terms of filling somebody else's needs, right? There are whole industries that make their whole living off uh, meeting people's needs, right? So, and, and here's the thing. If you're not there to do that, they're going to find someone or something else to do that. And that's just how it is because that's human nature. But there's a freedom in being an expendable, right? Um, you get to paint outside the lines occasionally. You get to um, fly under the radar. You get to uh, take the risks that others who are bound by certain rules and regulations and red tape, let's say, um, they can't do that. They can't be seen. To be taking those risks and in that is a massive vast potential of rewards you know and it's there for the taking it's there for anyone who wants it, it it's like they say fortune favors the bold and um, and also he who dares wins so you know, when you sort of free yourself of all your attachments to why you won't take risks um, and you don't look at failure as the worst thing that can happen to you, you look at, you look at it as, you know, I've heard it, failure, there is no failure, there is only learning. And that took me a long way. Uh, what took me even further is, um, 
you know, failure to people like me is only a rehearsal for success. That's something I embodied and I adopted. And, you know, I, I really hope this helps you. I really hope it encourages you to take some risks, not stupid risks. Don't put your body on the line like if it's a health goal. Don't go smashing yourself around risking injury. But take the risk to show up for six, 12 months. Take the risk to stick to a habit for, for a couple of years, two, three, four, five, six years, right? And see where that gets you. You know, if, if all you did was show up and do the bare minimum, you know, in a, in a fitness class, all you did is you just show up, you do the bare minimum, you even goof off and be lazy occasionally. And, you know, maybe you, you don't do, you don't do the bare minimum, you do less than the bare minimum, but you show up and you interact and you participate. If you kept doing that and then some days when you feel good you go all out where do you think you would be in a few years you'd be from much different place than you would if you just went oh, i'll do it 100 percent or not at all and then you don't do it 100 percent, or you do 100 percent for the first two weeks two months and then you hurt yourself or you burn yourself out or you create so much stress around this new habit that you just it feels like a chore rather than something you enjoy and you quit you know, then you can see very easily through the sliding doors of time and space that you're going to be in a completely different place, in a completely different mindset, as a completely different person, doing completely different things with completely different people around you. All right, so it's your choice. Nothing can stop you from making the changes that you want to. There may be resistance, but that's going to teach you to level up that's going to strengthen you it's going to make you think of new strategies and new ways to attack these problems it's going to make you a problem solver right and very soon you're going to develop your own strategies your own tools your own techniques and you're going to become a master of whatever the fuck it is you want to do and be and become in your life and you can be do and have whatever you want it's just a matter of focus and participation and like I said I don't care where you come from I don't care what your background is I don't care how old you are I don't care if you're you're, you're good-looking or you're ugly or you're you're fat or you're thin or you're black or you're white or you're red or you're green I don't give a shit whether you're a rich king or you're a homeless pauper if you are willing to step out of your comfort zone, focus, participate, take responsibility for your own energy, then, you know, you deserve to have good things in your life. You deserve the best of the very best that life has to offer. I really hope this helps. I hope this encourages some of you to take some risks and step into a new future. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your energy. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.